in the sim world, you have multiple parts, right? You have the traditional IOCs. We think the IOCs are good, but they're short-lived. Then you have these TTPs, which are techniques, tactics, and procedures. These are micro behaviors of a malware or a ransomware. If you expand the sensitivity of that a little bit more, then you see data science back TTPs, where you're looking for some sort of a rare process in your organization, but you're limiting that to a malware family. So you're not looking for all rare. Then you have extreme data science algorithms. These are just pure, rare processes that are working. What we have realized is the sweet spot is this data science back TTPs, which is what is going to provide future proof of all the variants. Now for us to do that, we want to have this mindset of you want to catch the data once and you want to harness this data multiple times. TTPs are usually modeled as uh, you know, rules and signatures based on observations. Where data science helps you here is to now take these TTPs and start accounting for two scenarios that organizations are primarily running into. One is attackers change or do smallest variations in their tactics, which oftentimes are missed out on unless you know, a customer is impacted or an organization is impacted. So data science helps us with accounting for those variations. The, the second uh, you know, challenge that um, organizations typically run into is every organization is unique in their way of you know their controls and the level of telemetry that they collect today and uh, what that means in the world of TTPs is you know some TTPs are you know bound to be a bit more chattier than the rest so what data science helps you is to start applying that organization specific context so that you can start learning off of these TTPs to ideally see uh, you know what is actually suspicious you know versus you know what is business as usual. If you look at what a hunter or a tier one responder does, the first thing they do is try to validate that a, a given alert is a true positive. And the way they do that is they go look at other data. They contextualize the alert to either verify that it's an attack, that it's a true positive, or find conflicting evidence that says it's a false positive. So why not go after that as automation let's go contextualize alerts and let's combine as much signal together as we can. So one of our main goals is the combination of all the signals possible to create holistic incidents out of combination of alerts and raw telemetry to accelerate investigators and hunters. There is a reason why science is in the term data science. We follow the scientific method. So we form a hypothesis. We conduct experiments. Um, those experiments either confirm our hypothesis or most times actually deny it and tell us a new hypothesis. And we iterate. And so in, our, in, in the application of cybersecurity, that iteration occurs by producing candidate detections and then going to our threat research and threat hunters to validate or invalidate um, those, so mark false and true positives. Once we have a couple of true positives, then working closely with the threat hunters and, and researchers to mark the false positives, and more importantly, tell us why. That why helps us encode and improve the algorithm to reduce the false positives. Eventually, the false positives are minimized and the true positives are maximized, we feel confident that we have a high quality detector and we can take it to the product. And then we, of course, work with our engineering partners to ensure that quality is maintained. We're responsible as data science to maintain the performance from an algorithmic perspective. And we move on to the next piece of content at that point. The standardization of you know, data models is one of the most important benefits that I would say when you harness the data once and then use it for you know, multiple different uh, you know, consumers or multiple different you know, applications.